Hello fellow traders, my name is Curtis Bott and what you see is my rhythmic for some of my trial accounts and I've got some charts and stuff to decide and I just want to show you a little bit of discretionary scalping. Um, this is a micros so I don't have to have a stop in, a, uh, in, in place when I do the micros, uh, though I do when I uh, trade bennies, I always have my stop and target bracket order and um, I really don't know what's going on here in the market but I'm just going to do a little bit of discretionary scalping. It looks like we're you know trading lower, I'm going to buy one. And I'm going to try to keep my size down and keep my max risk to, say, $60 to $80 and scalp out maybe $30, $40, $50 here. Um, you know, I have a signal on these or anything. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of discretionary scalping. So we've been trading down, so maybe we'll get a little bounce here or maybe we'll continue lower. Um, I'm just trying to trade the volatility here with small size. Um, Okay, that, that is actually a signal of mine, a, a, a long entry signal, but uh, I'm not going to add anything here uh, because I'm already in profit. Uh, that is off of a, off of a chart, actually. Um, it's not the strongest signal, but it is a signal, so I'm going to hold here and see what we get. <clears throat> And sometimes when these signals break, you get another, you know, get another run down. So I don't want to get over aggressive here. I'm just trying to manage my risk through my size. I don't uh, anticipate I have a large alpha here or maybe no alpha. Um, so, um, you know, again, I'm being very, uh, it's a certain way of trading. Uh, if I were trading with size, I'd be trading differently with bracket orders and, you know, stop and target in place. This is just one of my trials. The main thing is I don't want to let it run against me or add too much to where I end up with a big loss or even losing the account. Um, so if I'm down like, say, $80, I'll probably just go ahead and uh, close it out and be done. Uh, so I don't want to be down to $80, obviously. Um, that's kind of where I'm looking at. So if I'm down $80, which i got a lot of room here, but um, uh, so at some point I may add to, to improve my entry uh, as I just watch what happens here. So what I'm looking at, off, uh, what you don't see is I'm looking at so a couple of different charts. I'm looking at a one minute, which I normally don't do that. But again, this is just very discretionary uh, scalping. I'm looking at uh, some Rico charts and uh, <clears throat> 29.50 I want to add. And the reason I'm doing that is because I see some vo uh, a previous volume note there. I mean, this is, again, very discretionary. Probably doesn't have very much edge. Um, uh, just trying to scalp out and see how I do. Just a little bit of discretionary scalping, taking advantage of the volatility. If we get a strong directional move, um, then I may be in trouble uh, in terms of uh, <clears throat> my ability to manage in this in this methodology. So, the main thing is just not to get uh, overexcited to try to do too much and to put myself in a position where. I'm taking a stop loss um, or taking a large loss. I'd always, of course, reverse, take a loss if I wanted to. But, uh, you know, again, this is very discretionary type of trading. So um, uh, I'm just going to read the market here and, and uh, try to take advantage of some of the volatility, provide a little bit of liquidity, and, uh, and see how that goes. So we are uh, at negative two standard deviations on one of my charts. Um, we're also around the daily, uh, we're also around the VWAP. So we'll see what that does. Now, um, this is kind of interesting because we're trading above my entry now. Um, do I add? <clears throat> I'm look here and see what we got going on. Yeah, we've been making new highs. One of the patterns I've seen, we make a new high on set of one minute and then we trade lower. We've done that a couple of times, so a little bit risky to add, but uh, because uh, in the bear market, you know, you think about bear flag, you go up and then you trade lower to a new low, which would be down here somewhere. Um, but I'm going to, I think I will add, um, we're above that entry signal. I'm going to add and um, see if I can get just a little bit, see if I can get two contracts here at the uh, 3475 level. Um, I think I'm going to try to get a little more. Let me get, try to get two here. Okay. <clears throat> the risk is with the market being bearish is that we could, you know, dump down very fast. So I've got one off there. And um, I'm 
know, a couple of things I could do here. All right, I'm off now. So I've got sixteen dollars. I'm up sixteen dollars uh, before for calls. Now we've uh, we've started to make a reversal on a uh, uh, on one of my charts. Um, yeah, I don't have my charts laid out here. They're all kind of scattered because I was doing some programming and stuff earlier. Um, so uh, maybe next time I'll share, share my charts. But um, uh, one of my on the higher time frame, we've, we've put in a reversal now. Um, a little bit risky to, sh to short here because we could trade all the way back to the plus, plus of two standard deviations. Uh, so I'm going to wait. Um, I don't want to really go long here because either because um, yeah, for some other reasons. So I just want to sit here and wait. You know, with the uh, highly discretionary scalping of this top, where we're kind of just trying to take advantage of volatility, uh, the the risk is obviously a jump, a very fast move. Uh, I think I'm going to take a short here. The risk is a, a jump, a very fast move, a, a strong direction move, a you know move without much back and forth, and then you're stuck. There's no way you can prove your entry price. Um, you know, you get a strong run in one way or the other, and if you don't recognize that and kill it um, <clears throat> or keep your size down, then you're going to get lose your account. And or take a big loss with this type of a scalping. So, you know, I can improve my entry price some, but uh, you know, maybe if it's four year area, I can improve it. But the, uh, you know, that would be what the stops are. So we may run up to forty, but if we get a, a run that's uh, two, if you get one uh, very tight trend uh, uh, trades that trade in very tight uh, trends that trade in very tight channels, or you know, just very strong one directional move. Uh, fading and, and providing liquidity in this way is a losing strategy. So that's one thing you have to be aware of is, is can I try to identify that possibility? Um, uh, <clears throat> I'm assuming I don't have much of, a, of an edge here. So uh, again, I'm being, uh, you know, cautious with my position sizing. Instead of assuming I do have an edge, this type of a trade, I'm assuming I don't have an edge. So, um, <clears throat> I'm tempted to add another contract here because I think we're getting ready to make a down move. So I'm going to go and add another contract there. And uh, maybe I was wrong on that. So that little low got bought up. You can see here, and one thing I look at in this type of a trade, and again, it's, it's not the only way I trade, but, you know, up here at my liquidation level at 44, you know, I don't want to be down at $80 on our trade. So this is my, my liquidation level is 44 at this point. And the, the most obvious stop or the next entry would be around this 40, 40, 75. So we may run up to there and I'd probably re-enter there to improve my to improve my cost basis, but also because we may um, reverse there. Now, if we get a strong, again, a strong direction move that doesn't, you know, just flies up there, then that's, uh, that's essentially your loss. Let's see how fast we we uh, we fall here. Again, we're in this kind of this overall uh, in a larger time frame. We're in a you know we're in a down channel, and a lot of times in the bearish markets we fall hard from uh, from highs. Okay. See how efficient the market is. Wherever I move my orders, um, even though I'm not even in in the market. Uh, the, the market, you know, is, is extremely efficient and, you know, it can, it, it responds, it's adaptive, it responds to whatever you do. And uh, you can see the competition here for these limit orders. Um, and as this move unfolds, we, you know, we will probably trade down, we may trade down further as the intention of the market becomes more clear. But you can see that in any mo given moment, the market's pretty efficient. Yep. Because they didn't want to feel me there.
Yep. I took a break even there. Um, don't know if it was a thing to do or not. Um, I'm gonna leave my my bower resting there so I can get filled, and maybe I'll take the opposite side of the tray. Oh, see how how the uh, orders are just kind of splashing around there. Uh, I'm gonna shoot a bower in there. If I get filled, I get filled, okay. And then we dump. So it was, it was a buyer that was holding everything up. Um, and now they the stops have gotten run. So this is showing my open. I can change it to my total as well. The main thing is to be careful not to get too aggressive here. I think we probably will reverse here, but I may be wrong. Or bounce a little bit. I'm going to take that off a break even. Get very aggressive here. Nope. Okay, so we're getting down to this, uh, to my liquidation level here. That's what my total is. Okay, my total, I still have a little more room. So I'm in, I'm in a little bit of trouble here because we broke um, the liquidations right here. And so if we can come back, I can take these two off. <coughs> the intentionality seems to be getting you know, kind of clear that we want to, wants to trade lower, but maybe it'll change here. Yeah, I'm not liking this too much because um, we'll see. But uh, if we start to trade in a you know kind of a tight downtrend uh, channel, then that would be the type of activity I don't want to see. And if we can close this bar up, um, then the intentionality would be, I'm going to say back to the upside to this, uh, back to here. I'm going to put a... Um, Stop loss in. This is currently showing my total PL. So I'll be at break even essentially. Minus my fees if we take this uh, 
blowout. I could put it down here just 30 50. Um, would be another average support, but we don't. We could just go down there and take that out too. I'll just keep it tied. The start 250 is the uh, 375 is the air I'm looking at. You know, I should. You know, one thing I might consider here is maybe pulling it up to uh, break even simply because of these buyers lose control here. We could just continue to trade down. So even though it looks like we're going up now, um, you know, it's reversed. Um, the amount of trendiness in this market may indicate that uh, I'm going to pull that one to this 30, 36 level. Now, one thing I could do is short right here real quick, and um, that can be kind of risky if the market continues, but you kind of know where the tar targets are, so you can you know, you can just shoot a short in there. Uh, I guess maybe the key to that is to take it off real quick if it don't work, because the intentionality is to the upside now. I'm going to shoot two in. I'm going to get a very good feel on that. That's usually a bad sign if you get a bad feel. So I've got three on. Probably get stopped out on that one. I'll pull this up a little more. Yeah, I think uh, I'm have it. Uh, come on. You see how efficient the market is. I move my order there, and the market doesn't want to fill me. All right, and then it breaks lower. As soon as that buyer is taken out, in a, in, a, in a bear market, you may have one buyer. That's that's what I interpret that, whether it's true or not. It, it was one buyer there, and then once it gets taken out, a lot of your break even stops get hit, and the, the algos drive the market down. So we're currently at $42.50 total before fees, um, and that's not going to be near as good after fees. Um, this is again the very discretionary scalping. Not probably doesn't have much of an edge. Um, <clears throat> but um, let me pause and I'll see what the total is. It went around thirty-three dollars total on this. Um, does it have an edge? Mm, can't say if it has an edge. Uh, now here's an interesting thing. We've went up, made a new high, and uh, do we make a new low again? And if we do Probably targeting this. Uh, this is probably where we're going to be ending up down here. I paused the uh, the uh, recording to cough. So uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to. If this breaks, it's thirty-two fifty breaks. I expect we get some liquidity down here. Uh, I see some orders in the book there. We may go test that, test that out. Yeah, the risk is we run. We get another, we get some kind of run here, so maybe it's a little bit more conservative. I don't like that. I've got a signal just came up that's extremely bear. It's a bearish continuation signal. I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna try to get a short on here. With a stop at the uh, 37 level, I don't know that we'll we'll um, sometimes we come up and target the stop. So I'm going to add one, my two, and um, we should make a new low. And it'll be put us down to this 30, 70, you know, down here in this 31. Maybe I'll pull my targets down because we could if we, um, you know. I'll tack it once more at the 37. If we 
trade back above 37 is all. So let me just put my uh, buy orders up here. And we've got still breakfast 32.50 low. Added one more. Got a bad feel again on that one as I tried to shoot it in at this 36 level. Three, so I gotta, gotta be careful. Here is again the very discretionary. I've seen the signal come up, but I'm not exactly trading the signal. I'm I'm, I'm just trying to trade, um, you know, a little bit smaller. So I don't want to get too big on this idea that there's a signal in the market, but there is an indication we could break down to these, retest these lows. If we trade above 36, then the bulls may uh, you know, push it on up. So this may be back to break even here. I'm going to try to shoot in here at this 36 level. Couple. Take them up at break even. We got five on now total. I'm going to take some off here. Just in case that, uh, just in case this uh, 3250 holds it, probably won't. Well, I don't think it will not. So we just take some off to be controlling my size. I got three on now. Yeah. Yeah, they're probing this 36. If we if we get above this 36, I might just cancel this. Probing the stops at 36 is what they're doing. Market's doing anyway. Okay. I've got two on now. And uh, again, well, we're going to probably test this 3250 level. That's probably the intentionality now since we fell at 36. I'm actually going to bring my stop up to uh, hmm, 3675. They might get it there, but I don't want to. No, that may be too much even. I don't want to. Um, may just cancel it here. You're probing this out, you know. So we reversed them, canceling everything, and um, I'm actually going to reverse. This may be a mistake. As long as we hold above this 36 level potential, where you know the the uh, that signal is invalidated. Um, Yeah, I'm going to add one there. I think we may be trading back up to this, uh, making a move back up to here. Another one here. Add one more. My stop will be um, this right here. Got four on now, and um, as long as we hold above 
let's just say 3450. Um, I'm going to try to work to the long side now if we don't just run down and get my stops. I added one more. I'm going to take these off quickly if I can. Come on. Do, 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 do. Uh, I'm going to be a little more generous. Just three. I want this reverse hard on me. Okay. I'll feed him that one. And we'll probably, you know, if we get if we get above this resistance here, we'll probably shoot up or, or shoot back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one off there. Okay, I've got um, two on and yeah. See how efficient the market was. We weren't able to get above this seller here, so we just shot back down. Now we've hit the break-even stops potentially, making the market extremely efficient. Uh, if you don't want to take the risk. Um, you have to be down here at this 36 level. Intentionality looks to the upside. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is because we're moving up pretty fast, I'm going to shoot in a sell order for the market just to get out quickly. I'm going to put my uh, stop at break even because we are, you know, we, we've kind of moved up and um, I'm reading some trendiness in this market. So. I give it and just protect one tick there. I'm just gonna hold this and see if we can, you know, ride back to. Uh, <coughs> uh, I want to kill it. Okay. And uh, now, since we're making this directional move, I don't want to really uh, take the short side because we, again, if we if we uh, take out this seller here, we could up to this 45 level is the next. Uh, that's the intentionality if, if we hold above this uh, or we could reverse. And shorting, uh, this, this is a plus two standard deviation, a plus two standard deviation on one of my charts. Shorting at plus at the plus two, it can be risky. We get sometimes some trends up there. Overall, the market seems um, like, uh, I don't know, but it's more risky shorting at plus two than it is buying at the minus two, uh, in my opinion. But we can get some strong trends on a, on a trend day. We'll, you know, we'll get, we'll peg into that plus two. And a lot of times you'll get another, you know, several legs up from that. So that can be risky depending on the time of day and, you know, the market conditions. So um, this is a pretty good little run here. And I think it, um, you know, I guess what I'm thinking on this is simply that I could maybe start to buy dips if we get them, you know, little shallow dips. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, look to buy the, the dip. And these... Uh, we got about this resistance here, this 40, uh, the 4075. So we'll see if we hold above it or crash below it. Okay, we're almost at 30 minutes here. I've actually put up uh, $51 total. And um, you know, if this type of scalping, you want to pretty modest targets, I think, because again, it's solid discretionary, probably not much edge to it. Okay. I'm going to target this 45 as I suspected. And um, that was the, the, the next target. And um, sometimes we'll shoot above this, the, you know, the high, the higher level target. And sometimes we'll, uh, we'll pause here. But I'm going to try to shoot some in here, some sellers in if we get up to in this sell zone here. <coughs> We're going to shoot one in. 
I'm going to shoot two in. I'm going to take them off uh, pretty quickly at one point. Okay. Just small scalps trying to take advantage of all that. We're at 30 minutes here, and um, again, this type of trade, I don't know if it has much of an edge, um, but you can see by trading small, um, you can kind of manage your risk uh, to a certain degree. You don't get too unlucky. Now we're coming up to this 45 level. I'm going to put an order in there. I don't normally like to leave a resting order as we don't. I don't always like to leave a resting order in because the order, if the strong the trade's very strong here, we just trade right through this, and I'd rather. I'd really almost trade it in with a market, like shoot it in with a market order. Uh, so I'm going to pull this actually. But I'm going to keep this in mind at this 45 level. And if it comes up to it, I may shoot a market in. Um, it's just a preference of how I like to trade. If I see this turning, with the limit order, you can't react to the order flow at all. And um, we could shoot past this. We've got a fairly strong directional move here as the sellers got trapped. And so, you know, again, without without back and forth, they don't, nobody can really get out of this of these trades. So, okay, we're coming down for a dip. How about this, maybe this 475 level? That was an area of interest uh, before. One thing I don't want to do is, you know, fool myself into thinking I have an edge with this type of a method because I don't think there's much of an edge with this type of a method. Um, so um, it's chaotic. The market's chaotic. Let's put it that way. And I may have a, a momentary edge, but the market can change, it can shift. And, uh, you know, we're thinking this is a buy zone. We could blow past this. And so I'm trying to think about um, that possibility as well is maybe we blow past this, maybe this and we trade back down to the lows. Um, that is a risk when it comes back in is in a bearish market says uh, the supports don't tend to work very well. So, uh, you know, uh, areas of high volume and stuff and fast markets and more bearish markets, you just, just blows right through them. So um, that's one thing on my consideration as well as we is, is maybe uh, then maybe we blow past this uh, you think about it, um, in a bearish market, over time, we'll be making new lows. And that's one thing I think about over time, if we're in a, if we're, if the, if we're in a, like, if the market is moving towards a, a destination, we'll be making new lows to, in, in, in a certain amount of time. So holding is not uh, advantage. I'm going to shoot in another market there. So I've got two on now. Okay. And we'll see. And as you see, this, this level of interest isn't, um, you know, kind of went through it. So, and that's more typical with more bearish markets is you have, um, you, you shoot through supports instead of uh, respecting them at any rate. And the market spends more times at, at the lows, but I don't know that's what we're in right now. So that's why I'm, I was willing to take the risk on it. Um, main thing here is not to get too aggressive. I might be able to repair this trade or do something to it. The trade small. I am at two contracts. Um, Got to be patient here, not get too aggressive. We have a sell signal, uh, but the overall conditions were not. Con we're not to conduce it to at 44. So we may retest that. If this, if this low gets bought, we may retest somewhere up in this area. Um, I'm 
only want to do is see how we trade above once we go above the average. You know how we um, how the market likes to trade when we hold above this average. Do we you know uh, reject it and, and start to hold it below it, which looks like we may be doing, or do we you know shoot above it? If we start to hold below the average, then uh, or my average entry, that's a <coughs> that's a uh, that's bearish. Because a lot of people, you know, you see how we help, we're, we're, we're doing that. Now, um, and then we fall, you know, essentially the average is becoming a res as a resistance and we fall way below it. That's a kind of a bearish market signal. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Uh, this, uh, be a little, I'm going to pull this to break even, actually. And when we get above this average, you know, there may be some, uh, my average entry may see some bots start to buy and, and push it back up. Let's see here. So we, the, uh, that put us at 44.50, you know, if we, if we trade back to that. I'm reading now. We got some cross currents in the markets where the uh, order flow is 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 negative, but the uh, uh, the price is still going up. So we got some we got some cross currents. So I think I want to protect my uh, this position here. I may just close it. Let's see here. Okay, I got a buy signal, and I've got selling the buy signal. We may in the we may start to chop around here, actually. Uh, man, I don't want to sell this now because I just got a buy signal. But in a chop zone, I think we may have entered a chop zone here. Um, I haven't looked to see if there's any type of volume here, but it looks like we've entered a volume. There's probably some higher volume building here. I think we're probably going to either resolve up or start to chop around here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to take this off if they'll give it to me. Uh, come on. Because I think we're going to chop around. I'm going to, have to go ahead and pull that stop loss. And uh, because of that buy signal, I think we're, we may chop around here. And uh, choppy zones. Uh, there's some volume coming in here, <coughs> which I interpret to be uh, we found an area of value here. We're probably just going to hang around here for a while. So we may. Trade from the low to the high, high from the low. So I'm going to see if that's the case. I'm not going to add any size because we may test the low or, or whatever. As long as we're holding above this uh, 38.75 level, I think we're just going to chop around here for a while. And my reason for that, again, is just simply I've seen a, a sell signal and a buy signal pretty close together indicating choppiness. Um, I've only got one on here. And um, thirty-eight fifty is the uh, the low of that signal. We may go test that. Um, Probe that. I don't sense a lot of directionality here. It's maybe an opportunity to buy low. Let me see if I can shoot one in here. Went and shot one in there. And my thesis is we're going to chop around here. So uh, buying lows, maybe selling highs will be uh, useful for a little bit. Market may be digesting these new um, these new prices or some volume coming in. Notice we we still didn't want to trade above that average. We were up there, we just traded it, and then uh, the sellers we didn't want to take the trade above my average entry price. <laughs> Look at that. That's a little bit bearish, but overall, I think we're choppy. So I'm going to hold this. I'm going to move this uh, in. And I think we might just bounce above this. I'm going to 
I'm going to reduce my targets here. See if we bounce above this. We could go up and test it or bounce above. I feel like we'll maybe we'll bounce above it as I don't feel like we've got true directionality there. And see, so I have no, I really don't have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, this is just purely highly discretionary stuff, which is um, one of the things I try to stay away from. It's just my ability to read markets. Uh, it allows me to do this to some degree in certain environments, uh, but it can also, okay, I'm filled there, plus 74, and um, I'm going to call it there. Um, again, this is just uh, small scalping. Uh, I can only do this in certain market environments. I need probably a, a more quantitative edge. Um, but you can see that's just scalping. Um, is it a good method or a bad method? Um, I don't know, but I hope you found it uh, entertaining, valuable to some degree. Uh, we'll close out there with total 74 before calls. Uh, I'm going to pause this and bring up the, the uh, uh, after calls. Okay, so here you see the trials um, uh, about showing my accounts. And this is a 74 one. So the commission's fees were pretty high. We ended up at 47 net profit or loss. 62%, at 67% of this. You want to be about 70, 30. Um, that's where we was at. Uh, 26 uh, orders in. at two. Uh, scratch trades, uh, here's the scratch, the scratch percentage, but, um, uh, so yeah, this is the other account I was trading earlier. Um, getting a small scalping, uh, I don't know how much edge this has, but, uh, you know, I can, sometimes I can do it, um, through my ability to read markets and stuff, but, uh, trading so small, the market's very efficient and, um, not a huge amount of alpha, but you can see, um, you know, I never went over. I never was down $80, although there was a tail risk. There's a couple of times it looked like I could have been. And, um, you know, I made, uh, we would say at this point, I'm up maybe one half of my total risk unit. Uh, not my average risk, my total risk in a day, kind of a half of R. So uh, I, th I think this could work. You just have to be careful with it because, you know, the, the skew is to the, uh, you're taking more risk than reward. Um, and you have to be disciplined and not let it get out of hand. It can very easily lose an account this way. If you add, you know, adding in too much, not controlling your size, getting too aggressive. And especially if you think you're trading small, um, it's very easy to lose an account, uh, trade thinking you're trading small because, um, you know, you think the risk is not there, but you add, but you know, you keep adding contracts until you lose an account, which, uh, you know, that's happened to me many times trying to trade small like this, you know, trying to control my size and all, and you, you just get too aggressive. It's, uh, um, but it is, if you control your size, uh, you know, you can reduce your risk, but, you know, by keeping your size down, uh, you know, keep your, keep your position small until the market kind of reveals its hand. Um, it's kind of the idea of this style. Uh, kind of interesting. Okay. I uh, hope it helps. Uh, again, my personal opinion only, uh, future trading risky. I don't trade money you can't afford to lose. Um, thanks.